Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So we are going to start. So welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Maureen Nokoye and I'm so excited to hear your presentation and probably learn from your personal discovery. So I'm looking forward to an engaging and informative experience. I hope you will support and keep my thoughts alive. So in today's class, we will concentrate on the group activity, just like it said before. We concentrate more on group one and two presentation, which will be 20 minutes for each group. You have 20 minutes to present what you've learned so far. I'll give hints on how group four and five can carry out their own task. I will also tell you um, that if you do not stress yourself to learn, you may never learn. So in this type of class, when you're learning anything about tech, Practicing and researching more is key to learning this skill. When you hear about the skill, you go further to research what is this skill all about, how can I use it on my own? So most times this skill is just all about knowing there is nothing much in them. When you play with them, you see, oh, so this is what I can do. And you see that it's easy to better your life. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. I was trying to find out the noise in my background. So if you don't if you don't practice, you will never learn how to do this. Use this thing. Theory is not enough. Because when you're watching, you may feel these things are easy to do until you try your hands on them. So, but when you try your hands, you become more confident. So, this class, you understand that being a virtual assistant, just like um, being a teacher in your school, you're not meant to teach mathematics, English, or all the subjects. You are supposed to have a specialty. So being a virtual assistant, you look at the strength, you have as a niche for yourself. If you don't like doing certain things, there's no way trying to do them in the long, 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 um, long run. You can try to do those things for yourself, but you know that you cannot do this as a business, keep on doing it because you don't like doing it. So you need it from the services you'll be offering. So virtual assistant is like, I've explained it enough in this class, assisting people, assisting people to make their life easier. Just like you will see in this activity that we are going to show today, I'm going to do, do a recap on, on them to show more life, but I would like um, the group to show their own screen and to help me understand that and to help me have this joy that I am going to do. So please mute yourself. Please mute yourself, please. So, group one. In group one, we'll be creating models, we'll be testing our filters, we'll be undoing messages, vacation responder and signature. So who is willing to share their screen with one? So I'll bring down my screen. Who is willing to share their screen? Okay, Bianca, thank you. Okay, so I'll stop sharing so you can share.
the winter is in Chile. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Okay, let's see if I can get the hang of this one. Um, So I I don't know if you can hear me because the noise is kind of I don't know where the noise is coming from. So let me know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay, are you seeing my my Gmail now? Yes, I can. Okay. So good evening, everybody. So good evening. I am in group one, and we are going to be looking at nature, filter, undo, label, and quotation um, and um, responders. Responder. Okay, so this is my email. And this is my email. And uh, okay, let's start with the general settings. Let's see, um, let's go to settings. What we are going to do now is undo. So I'm assuming that we all know what undo means. It means you have sent an email and you suddenly remember, oh, I'm supposed to put this, or no, this email is too harsh, whatever. So we are going to see how we can retrieve the email without it dropping in the recipient's um, inbox. So we go to settings and just follow my cursor because what I'm seeing is my Gmail. I, I don't know if <laughs> if you don't see me, please. Someone, somebody should say, we can't see you or we can't hear you, please. Okay, so we go to uh, see all settings. See my cursor. So this is general where you have general, where you have labels, inbox, so on and so forth. So we are at general now. You are going to scroll down your page. We are looking for undo. So this is undo send. I just highlighted it. Here, okay, I already have mine at 30 seconds, but this is 5, 10, 20, 30, the maximum um, length of time that you can, that's your, your, you can, you have to undo an email that you just sent, okay? So you can put it at five seconds if you, you know, you don't care about undoing messages or at 30, mine is already at 30 seconds. So what it means is that when you send a message, you will see something will appear if you are seeing my cursor by the left hand side of your screen um, email sent email sent and then you see undo learn more so if you say if you click on undo in within 30 seconds if you set your undo send at 30 seconds it will retrieve the email without it getting to the person you intended it for and then on this same page, remember we are at general. We are here at general. General. Okay. So um, on this same page, you keep going down, and you know there are so many things here that you can um, look up on your own, like this auto correct. It's a cute feature, but I think it's usually on, so you can turn it off if you want. You see spelling and all that and all that. So let me not digress. Like our instructor said, you must you know, want to learn so you can go through these things. Then stars here, this is important for your labels. So you can choose to have one star. That means in use here, you see in use. It means you have only one star in use. So if you create your label, you are going to have 
you if you want to put a, a, a star on any of your messages, it is going to be only this yellow star. You can use four stars. So in use, you have these, but I always use all stars. I don't know why, but I just like it. So if you are working with a client, remember that you, you have to agree with him or her on what the stars mean. So you may have to use only one, or you may have to use up to four or all of them, but each one has to mean something for the both of you. So um, we've chosen our stars. Then you keep going down. You see where I have a cute little picture. If you don't have a picture on your email, if you want to put a picture, you go to this place and you know follow the prompts. Then here we are at signature. Signature. It's highlighted. Okay, so I what it means is that you are if you are sending a message, an email to somebody or on behalf of somebody, you are going to have something here that is like um a biography of you or whatever it is you want it to be. It could just be your name, it could be affiliations, you know, something that you could just put here so that when you send it it will appear on that person's email, on the inbox. When the person is reading your email, at the end, the person is going to see some info, information about you. So I wrote out some things here on my M word. So I'm going to copy it and then just so we can save time. You know, we have about 320 words or characters. I don't even know. And okay, I think it's characters because everything is not here, but we'll just use it this way because I have um, my LinkedIn profile, my research gate, another, 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 and, and then I'll click create. So now I can put a event. You can choose to, you know, use bold or it leaks or online and so on and so forth. So, um, what again? Um, insert signature before. No, I didn't look at that. Then here we have the vacation responder. I don't know if I'm too fast, but we have the vacation responder here. So you can turn it on and off, whichever one you want. So. Let's say I'm going on vacation. I'm turning my vacation responder on. So I'm choosing my dates. Let's say I'll be traveling on the 16th of February. And the last day here, this is last day, is um, maybe 24th of February, of August. I don't know why I'm saying February, <laughs> August. Then what is your subject? I won't be available for example what is your message uh, i want to sleep because i want to sleep true true okay so and then when you're done with this, filling what you want, you can still choose if you want this to be sent to, um, send it as a response to only people in your contacts and maybe people in, this is my official email address, so people in the University of Nigeria. So I chose two of them. So what this means is that if you send me an email within, between um, August 16th and August 24th, this is what you are going to get. I will not, I don't need to go online to see my email to start responding to you. It will drop in your inbox automatically telling you, I won't be around, I want to sleep, please resend your message or blah, 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 blah. On the, you can now give a date. Please resend all messages. Please forgive my typing. Resend all messages 
from August 25th. So the person will see it and say, okay, you're traveling on the 25th of August. I can decide to resend that message to you just in case because I've received emails from some professors and something like this pops up. And then the person will also write, um, please resend after this date because when I come back, I will delete the backlog. Yes, I'm not even kidding. I will delete the backlog because I cannot start looking at them. So if you get the vacation responder, you will just see that, okay, this person is going to delete backlogs and all that. It makes them more efficient, you know? So on the 25th of August upwards, you can now go ahead and resend that message. Remember that when you are done with everything you are doing here, you are going to have to save changes, save changes. When you save changes, these things will become permanent. Remember, you can still go back and redo them or, or undo them, whichever one. So a quick recap on what we said. I said, okay, we are doing undo, we are doing vacation responder, we are doing signature. So I went to um, this bold stuff. If you can see my cursor, this stuff here, if you click on it, you're going to see, see all settings. It will bring you to this page, this interface, where you have all these things here. And on this first one, the general, this is where you are going to see undo. This is your undo, where you choose the number of seconds it will take for, your, for you to retrieve an email. You are going to see uh, where to put your picture. You are going to see where to put your signature, where to put your vacation responder, where to choose your stars and all that. And then when you are done, remember to save changes. So I'm going to cancel it. I'm not going to save the ch changes, please. Okay. And then the next one, we'll look at labels and filters. I'll take them together. Okay. So here we have labels. So if you can see my cursor, this is this is labels just under more. And this plus sign is going to take me to new label. What do I want it to be? Let me say uh, money matters. Because I like me some money. And uh, I'll create it. Let's create another one. Let's call this important. No, let's not use a generic name. Let's just say do now. Because I like to be extra. So do now in place of urgent or important. So let's use just, just this too. So this is my mailbox. And it's quite a lot. If you look at my inbox, you see I have over 4,000 messages. So, and I want to, first of all, let me assign colors to my labels. Remember, I have all the stars. So, so let's say do now is red and uh, money matters. Let's make it green because, you know, it's money. Okay. So how do I move my, some mails from my inbox to any of my labels so let's choose um okay let's say unn emails uh pro unn and all that and all that so i will i like to write right click okay so you can right click i was looking for a shortcut for it right click and move to money matters They will disappear from my inbox and appear here where I have money matters in bold. I don't know why it's in bold. So when you open this, you see I have PROUNN, the two emails are here in money matters. Then I can still make sure that these emails are in my inbox. Maybe I have a client and even though um, I want the 
two emails to the two messages to be in money matters i also want it to be in the inbox so that when my client logs in and looks at it he'll see oh this is urgent this is a money matter money matter something so i can still go ahead and right click and move remember i highlighted if you if you don't know how to highlight you just go to this box here here that has select click on the arrow choose all so you highlighted and then right click move to inbox so these two messages are going to be here in money matters and still be in my inbox but the good thing is that it will be in my inbox and then it will have this very beautiful green something showing money matters so, so it is in my inbox my client is seeing it on his inbox it is also in the label or the folder where it is supposed to be. So let me quickly use this to, to choose filters. You know, we can say, oh, does it mean that I'll have to wait when an email comes in, I'll now move it to Money Matters, I'll move it to Do Now manually? No, you can do it automatically. So that takes us to filters. How do we filter messages? Filters means, to filter a message means, I would decide any message from, for example, let me say any message from UNN, let me say UNN or ResearchGate. You can see ResearchGate on my email. So let's say any email from PRO UNN or ResearchGate should go straight to Money Matters. That is your filtering it. So what will I do? I will come to my inbox, click this. I've highlighted PRO UNN. And then I will go to these three dots here. See my cursor where you have more. Click on it and then filter messages like these. The first one is mark as red, mark as important, add star, filter messages like these. Click on it. So what it does now is, okay, let me, let me go back and do that again. P-R-O-U-N-N, uh, what else do I choose? Uh, okay, let's just use that. Okay. P-R-O-U-N-N, uh, ResearchGate, Google Scholar. Let me use the three of them and see, because I haven't tried the three at the same time. Filter messages like these. Okay, now it takes us to this page where you have from, it means emails, email messages, whatever, from these people. See, there are three of them now, PROUNN, ResearchGate Mail, and Scholar Alerts. Okay, I chose three. So all e emails, all messages from these three emails should be filtered. You can still choose subjects. You can say, any email that has a subject that has a, a shopping in the subject, remove it, okay? You can say any email that has the words, see, you're seeing all the criteria, okay? Filter criteria here. Any email from, any email to, any email with a subject, maybe shopping, any email that has the words, uh buy okay or any email that doesn't have money i don't know why i keep saying money, but money okay so you have a lot of criteria that you can choose from or any email that has the size greater than how many mb or any email that has an attachment choose whatever criteria you want for me i'm choosing any email from, so any email from unn.edu.ng, any email from researchgetmail, any email from scholar alerts. This is what I'm mentioning. These are the emails, okay? This is what I'm mentioning. So I've chosen these ones. And then I will say, create filter. When you click on create filter, it now takes you to this beautiful page where you will now choose what to do. You can choose that any email from those three people, 
okay, let me say it, people, those three organizations, when they come, when the email, any email from them comes, what do I want it to do? Archive it, you choose archive if you want. You want it to be marked as read, that you have already read it. Fine, you choose it. If you want it to star it, you choose it. So I want it to star it. If you want it to apply the label, you choose the label. Choose the label. So I'm choosing um, do now, okay? So you can choose to forward it. You can choose to forward it. So any email from those three people, as soon as it is dropping in your mailbox, it is forwarding straight to another email. Maybe you no longer, you don't have access to this one. You have another one. So any email intended for this email address will go to another one. You will just add the address, the new email, email address here. Uh oh. Okay, sorry, let's go back. I don't want it to forward to anybody. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, it's all good. So let's do that again quickly. Choose the three dots. Say, um, what was I even doing again? <laughs> okay. Filter. Okay, let's go to inbox. Start afresh. These and these and these should be filters. So filter messages like this. We've gone through this process. Okay, so. I said, when you get to this place, I want it to, to be starred. I want it to have a label. So I'm choosing the label, do now. You can choose to delete it as soon as the email comes from these three people. Just delete. I don't want to see it. You can choose any of these things here. And then I also want to choose also apply filter to matching conversations. So it is not going to apply the filter to just these three that I chose, just these three messages. It is going to apply the filter to all messages I have received from these three people. So all the messages I've received, every email from them inside my inbox will have this filter. So when you are done and you are okay with what you have chosen, you can then create filter and then it could take a little while because I have a lot of messages in my um, inbox, but when you go to do now, they will start dropping. So this is um, do now. I'm going to do now label. They should be here. Don't bother network problem, but you, sh you should see that we have gone from zero messages in do now to 54. So in do now, this is the label. You see that every message here, every email here is from Google Scholar, is from ResearchGate, is from PROUNN. Okay, all of them, including this one from um, Oyekunle David. You can see that the email is, let's open it. You can see that the email is from ResearchGate. The person sent me a message on ResearchGate. So it is going straight to my do now label. I, I think, I think I've, I think I did. I, I've covered a lot the things that we were asked to do. Um, if not, instructor, please over to you. Should I recap or should I stop sharing? If the noise, if, did the noise come up again? Yes, when you come, when you, when you put on your mic. <laughs> I think this is from, I think it's from my system. I'm going to change the system, but Bianca, you did absolutely well. You, did, I think I've been clapping, clapping, clapping and smiling because I didn't teach filters. I never saw filters. Yes. I'm going to put off my mic. I'm using other computer to log in, but I'm coming back very soon. Thank you. So I think I'll have to stop sharing now. Well done, Miss Bianca. Does anyone have questions? Should I stop sharing? Do you have any questions? Or should I should we wait for our instructor? You can ask me? your questions. Why I log in, please.
Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay, so let me stop sharing. I, I think I don't I don't think I have questions. So. Sorry, Bianca, please hold on. Sorry. Thank you for the presentation. Thank, Thank you. Stop you. sharing already. <laughs> please, I want to ask you something. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. Let me go back. Should I go back? Yes. I just want to okay. know, like, if you archive a message, where do you go to see the archive? Ah, oh yeah, let's go and look for it together now. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go and look for it together. Um... um archive where do i use to see the archive self because i do a lot of archive you know i've not looked for it before i won't lie to you but i, I don't know if it's the same thing as trashing but i know that i do a lot of archiving but i've never gone to look for for where it is so maybe we should why don't we just ask google where does archived messages go go okay all mails they can be easily found under all mails label in gmail so let's go and look for the all mails um oh yeah oh yeah i think they are all here thank you for that question <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay so, in all mails. Yeah. Yes. Oh. So all mails, you will see all mail, you will have all your archived messages. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. You did a wonderful presentation. I enjoyed it. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, Yanka. Yeah. Let me ask the question, please. Okay. Um, okay, when you filter those messages, uh, that means yes. they are entering right? They are doing what? They are entering inside the labels, right? When you filter them. If I'm correct. Yes. Yes, if you filter them and you want them to go to labels, you choose the label you want it to go to, and it will go there. When you start the process of filtering, you can see you can see the things that will happen. You just flow with what you want. I think in filtering, I think you can also filter it to be deleted. So. Do you understand? Did you get that part? I think I showed it. When you choose what's the, the filter criteria and you click um, create filter, it will take you to that page where you can choose for, for it to be deleted. You can choose for it to be deleted. Did you, did you see that part? So you can just you can you can choose for it to be deleted. So it doesn't doesn't enter any any label or folder or anywhere. It will just it won't even drop in your inbox. It will just go as soon as the email is coming. So you can do it with emails from AliExpress and all those newsletters that we always sign up on and we, that we never read. So you can just filter it to be deleted. So or just unsubscribe. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, no. You're welcome. Okay, I'm back. Thank you, Bianca. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that with this development, seriously, I'm so excited. We were able to color the labels on a different, um, using different formats. You showed filters. It shows you've been working hard you've been working so hard to organize your email yes i had no sleep last night <laughs> <laughs> you're a good student seriously thank you your energy is infectious <laughs> thank you 
<laughs> so I will share my group, um, group two, please, please. Someone in group two should do the presentation, even if you don't know what you present. Anyhow, we'll still do a recap of all these things, but I want some somebody to try. So um, what will you be doing? Um, hope the noise has stopped. Yes, yes, yes it has stopped. Uh, it was with the old laptop. So group two. Um, Group two, um, your your activities. Let me check WhatsApp. I it's on time scheduling. So you'll be who is ready in group two, so we can save time. You can raise up your hands and share your screen. Please don't disappoint us. Group two. So I'm going to add someone to this group. Anyone in group two? Nobody. Wow. <laughs> wow. OK, the activity is that you a virtual assistant. And we did it in the last class. You're a virtual assistant for a growing tech startup that has clients and partners across different time zones, e.g. New York, London, Sydney. Your task is to coordinate a series of meetings between the startup CEO, a client in London, and a potential partner in Sydney. Each party has specific time constraints, and you need to find overlapping availability schedule meetings and ensure they are correctly reflected in google calendar but we did this thing in the last class have you forgotten so this is what we are going to do so i'm going to share is anyone willing to do this Share. Can you see my browser? Yes. So the first thing to do as a virtual assistant, your client said, organize a meeting between myself and other startups, uh, myself and my clients in um, London and Sydney. Now your client is in New York. So, you know, these are people in different time zone. So I made mention of a tool called Word Time Body in the last class. So Word Time Body. So the first thing I'm supposed to do is to ask the details of the meeting when my client, because I'm working with my client's preference, when my client would want the meeting. So with that information, and I'm also supposed to ask the agenda of the meeting, because as I'm booking the meeting, I will write down the agenda. You cannot just call someone to an unknown meeting. You have to write the agenda. Also, what else? Um, um, that's that for now. So what time body will help us to find a suitable time? Let's say my client said, OK, I'm going to work with Oh, hold on. Why I add this lady to the call? I think I can't add her because I'm not here. Oh, don't worry. Let's continue. So what time body, I'll click on it. So we saw this the last time, do not consent. You saw this the last time. So my client is in, okay, I'll leave London now because we have clients in London. My client now is in New York. 
New York. Let's choose Brooklyn in New York. Then uh, the other one is in Sydney, in Nova Scotia, and Canada. Sydney. So the ones that that does not consign us here, we are going to remove it. We are going to remove this and this. So we are comparing between three time zones, BST, EDT, and ADT. So now the, our time here is 8 p.m. Let's say the uh, meeting is going to hold tomorrow, which is the um, which is Wednesday. So we are going to click on Wednesday. <laughs> So I can't see you can't see your work on time video. body. But you're seeing see that I'm doing work. something, right? So I'm going to increase this. No, it's just you no, know, we're just, just seeing your Google, Google your Google, you're seeing seeing your Google interface. You're seeing my Google interface. Make event planning seamlessly. Conference management software. That's what we're seeing. Oh. So I'm going to um, okay. Once you start seeing, you let me know. Yeah, you're seeing the what time body, right? Yes. Okay. So now I've chosen London, I've chosen New York, and I've chosen Canada. So this wartime body will help us, will not stress ourselves too much in case if they need it urgently. So we are going to, from what my client wants, because I'm working for my client, for what um, whatever my client wants, I'm going to work with that. My client said they want the meeting from 12 p.m. Anytime from 12 p.m. is fine. But anytime from 12 p.m. is fine. So I'm going to choose any time from here. And what's the next step I will do? When I choose any time from here, what's the next step? Please, can someone remind me? Okay, quickly, we are going to check uh, our client's calendar, Google Calendar to know if they have anything, any engagement on from 12 on Tuesday. And also we are still going to give, we are still going to give um, the other people, their clients, we are still going to give their, their clients um, time, maybe not just Tuesday because you're not imposing it on them, um, maybe, Okay, tomorrow is Wednesday, sorry, not just Wednesday, Thursday, and probably Friday. So, but before I do that, I'm supposed to ask my clients, is that fine? And my clients will say, anytime from 12 is okay for me. It's left for the virtual assistant to still look at their calendar and know if which time from 12 is suitable for them. Because maybe they have other engagements on those days, but they prefer to have meetings from 12 downwards. So, I'm going to this system i don't this is not my calendar is not here i'm going to sign in okay i'll try to sign in into my calendar google calendar but this is not my client can you see my calendar no. So this is the Google Calendar. We'll check and see if they have any any appointment for that day. Um, so there's no appointment for Tuesday. It's open. It's Wednesday is open. Thursday is open from 12. This is 11 a.m. So from 
12 down west, they, they are free. So what will I do? I'm going to go to my email. I don't know if I change tab, if you'll be able to see it, but you should be able to see it. Are you still seeing the word time body? Galinda. No, it's just the Galinda. Okay. So we'll go to you seeing only the... you're seeing only the calendar. So we are going to go to We are going to email. So I think before I share, I'm going to open the email because I notice if I share the tab, you don't see the previous one. So I'm trying to, okay, my email is not open here. Gmail. I'm trying to open my email. Can you see my email? Yes. Okay, thank you. So the next thing to do is to, because we are not imposing it on people, we are going to send them a message so that they will have an opinion. So, um, So this is this is the email we're going to compose compose to them like we did before blah 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 um what did we say in time body time body We saw um, 6 p.m. for 6 p.m. for the clients in London, 1 p.m. for my clients, for my for the person I'm working for, 2 p.m. for another client in Canada. That is for Wednesday, which is tomorrow. But you know, you don't fix meeting as quick as this. You're, um, it's just because this is just a practical class. You're going to give them, if you're a VA, when they tell you such a thing, you give them enough time to make their choice and to adjust their calendar for the meeting. So for
please confirm your availability for tomorrow's okay let's say tomorrow's meeting well this is not ideal you need to give them enough time 6 p.m um bst no whatever um Well, we need to call this short because if you were in the last class, we've done this already. So, but there's something I skipped telling you is how to create that link and send to them. How to create the link. So after you've sent them the, the message for them to choose the availability, after you've checked the time on what time body, you choose the time with their own time zone this 6 p.m that i wrote here if i check in what time body maybe it's bst or adt or whatever time zone it is so we are going to put it is 6 p.m in our own time which is whatever time in your own and that choose um, the time that's okay for you then you're supposed to create a link and how do you create this link you go to your google calendar You're only seeing my email, right? Yes. 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 Okay. I'll switch to it. Don't worry. I'll create, go to my Google Calendar. So Google Calendar, when I go to Google Calendar, you know, normally I'm going to create an event from here. If I'm to create an event, you know, you're supposed to sync your Zoom to your Google Calendar, which I don't think is here. There's no Zoom I'm synchronizing in this particular Google Calendar. So um what we are going to do after you sync to your zoom in your google calendar normally you create your events and either you, um either you send it through zoom or you send the video conferencing from google meet you can see my cursor right you send it so whatever event i'm going to create here will be on google meet video conferencing so but how do i now bring these three people so to meet at a particular time i'll come here i'll go to my name when i click can you see my can you see the screen very well yes i'll come down here go to my name there's three dots here wait let me zoom this out mm -hmm. Let me put it this way before, to save time. I'll go to these three dots here. I'll open it and go to settings and sharing. When I go to settings and sharing, I will make, I will set my primary time zone. My primary time zone, of course, is not Toronto, but I'll just set it this way. Primary time zone. Then I'll come to my world club. Um, we have London, one client in London, then another client in um, Sydney. So we are going to look for Sydney, but forgive me if I'm not able to find Sydney quickly because we have to be fast. We have to be fast. So I'll put any time and we will 
improvised seat at Sydney. So I'll put Newfoundland. Newfoundland is also in Canada. Then um, I will put um, what, um, which other place did we mention? Sydney, New York. New York. New York. Um, okay, there's Los Angeles here, which is still America. So these three times now, we've added them this way. Then we'll go back. We will go back. Now we have United Kingdom, um, St. John's time, which I think um, is a Newfoundland, then Los Angeles. So you can see the different time zones. One is in eight. 5, 12, then you're going to create your event. You create your event. You create your event um, today. The meeting is supposed to be, tomorrow's date is 14th. Fourteenth. Um, 14th, my client's time, let me say, my clients agreed for 1, 1 p.m. 1 p.m., then I'm going to save and send to them. And send them. Then how do, I'm supposed to create notification. I don't know if you've seen a situation whereby um, a link is created for you an event you're supposed to attend an event then automatically it syncs to your phone you you into your phone calendar it starts counting down because a notification was created for it in order to remind you maybe 30 minutes before the event that you have an event then or a day before the event so how do we create this notification um we'll go to setting One minute before. We need, okay, let's say five minutes before the event, but this is not where I want to go to. Create event. Find time. Add notification. Okay, I found it. Add notification. Notification 30 minutes before the event. I can change it to one day before. I can change it to one day before. It will notify them. 30 minutes before. It will still notify. Then I save. Event saved. So it syncs like that. Then you send them the you send them the um, link, invite through link. So you can see the notification 30 minutes before and one day before. Do you understand what I did? Or you would want to try it out first? Please, Are you asleep? The of the notification. Sorry? The, the setting of the notification, where did you click? I'll go back. Thank you. So create. This is create events. So in the events, um, I'm going to find find time. You see find time. Then you go when you when you uh, open that find tab find time. You see add notification. Can you see it down here? Add notification. So it could be one day before, or I'm changing it depending on what you want, 30 minutes before the meeting. So I chose these two. So it's going to tell them one day before, then 30 minutes before, it's still going to tell them. I could make it one hour, one hour before, but I don't want one hour. I want 30 minutes because it will be like, okay, in one hour time, I have a meeting and you may forget to come early. So 30 minutes before you should be on your way. So save. 
it has sink there. Do you understand? So there are also tools that can help you create reminders like Todoist. You can use Todoist to create reminder. Just like I've mentioned it, you can check it out. I will show you the... So, but do you understand what I just did in order to create a link for them? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Yes. Okay. So, um, I will continue to share. But um, group two should have made an effort. Group two should have made an effort. And you're all, almost 20 in number. Nobody shared the screen. So group three, I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain what you're going to do. So group three, this is traveling. You're supposed to create an itinerary for your clients. Please don't control the screen. Thank you. Group three. So the first thing you're supposed to do, please on Thursday, you're going to do this activity. Somebody should summon up the courage to do this activity. No matter how you did it, you must learn something when you when you um, go the extra mile. Gather necessary details. Ask your clients what they need. What time do you want to leave New um, Yeah New York? What time do you want to leave um, New York? What time would you want to be in London? What time is your meeting? Because you need the meeting time in order to create these things for them. Meeting cannot be in 2 p.m. and your and your client is landing in London by 1 p.m. They may miss the meeting because once they land, they still need to um, take uh, Uber to the venue and also you see consider that your client needs to land refresh and put their heads to um settle down and think more on the on whatever the meeting is all about before they attend the meeting so you are supposed to have that details gather necessary details um what seats what kind of um what position in the plane do they like is it economy or business? Do they like to sit by the window? But if you've worked with your client for a long time, you will know their preferences. So if you've done this thing um, over and over again, sometimes it will look stupid for you to ask because you already know all those things. Then book accommodation. How will you book accommodation? You can use, when you go to booking.com, you will see different um it's just like going to jumia you see a lot of people selling different things so when you go to booking.com you see different hotels um advertising the accommodation your client said they need king size so these details is in their um these details i stated it in the whatsapp activity they need king size bed it should be in the upper floor so these things are what you just simply have to do is to research go to booking.com look at the details you've gathered from your clients then when you choose it um you write it down depending on who your client is some people don't want to know these details they believe in your efficiency they believe you you get all these things sorted out so what else what else do you need? Um, road transportation. Use Uber business. So all these things is just like you're planning for yourself how you're going to travel. When you travel, you don't just book for um, the flights. When you land, you need a you need a car to reach a hotel. So you, you're supposed to organize these things and make it very easy for your client. So you use Uber business not only will you use uber business you find a driver in that location that you can have their number and they can be on call steady most of these locations um civilized um places they have like it's just like um 
they have companies that have drivers so you just have to google find um the company take number and call them they can give you the driver you can be calling and they'll give you um top-notch service so whenever you call in case of emergency in case of emergency they will come around and pick your client so your client don't need to stress at all you take the stress off them and do all these things then time zone so whenever you're booking all these things you make sure that the time zones the time zone you're considering the time zone the time zone in london new york and tokyo and whatever time the meeting is there with the knowledge of the time zone you can be able to book your flight and know when your um, client is landing in london and what time you book from from london to tokyo and from tokyo they are going back to new york directly so with this you have to think put buffer time just like i've said before your clients will not land now and start rushing immediately to the meeting they need time to relax it shows that you are efficient then their passport and visas you should be able to know um, the kind of passport they have the visa um, one month before whatever all these things should be ready the visa everything should be ready and also 24 hours before that travel you're supposed to cross check everything cross check um um with the airline cross check with the uber people that everything is perfect so that there will not be frustration or conflict between you and your clients so group three what you're simply going to do is to use what time body and know when this um flight will leave new york to london when it's going to land in london i don't know if i put the time of the meeting but you can just make up make up a time and say the meeting is by this time so they are going to stop in london that um uber people this is what you're going to do in the presentation you don't need to do it just state the state your steps as a virtual assistant what you're going to do of which i've just given um insight on it is it difficult it's not as difficult as it's not uh, he, are you the one responding yes uh, he. yes which group are you in group three yes okay you'll be in the next meeting right yes 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 please uh, you're going to present or if any other person wishes to present so you're going to present 10 minutes because like um unlike the way it's stated in the activity it looks difficult when you read it but just like i've explained it you see it's something easy something easy for you to do because you're not doing the actual call you're not doing the actual booking you're just, you're just going to explain your steps as a va what you're supposed to do then another person is still going to use another 10 minutes to give more insights in what they think should be done what they would have done better so 20 minutes then for group four group four is about research so there are a lot of things i just looked for something that will be easy because this is is just two weeks class and with this simple simple training you can you can go further to learn more at least it has given you the basics of what it is to be a virtual assistant you know now that it's not something that is difficult to do you just doing these things you do for yourself for someone else using particular tools and sometimes these tools you have to research them and know which tool am i so am i supposed to use to make my job easy now group four is about research so i put for instance this is not your activity but i'm trying to use this to explain what you're supposed to do in yours a client is visiting your city and needs a recommendation for a dinner restaurant they have specified the following criteria. So the research you're going to make now is how are you going to find an Italian cuisine? The location is downtown. So the location is not everywhere in your city. It should be in downtown 
and they told you their budget. So it's research. You're going to make this research. And when you make this research, there are ways to communicate. There are ways to communicate these things so that you're not giving your clients a book to read. You know, these days people are, um, people do not want to read too much. They have low attention span. So you try to make, how do you send this email? So that you've given summary, you, you wrote whatever that is needed and they don't feel bored working with you. So you send your email, you use bullet points um, because maybe you're not giving them only one option. You can give them option two, option, option three. So option one, maybe you say is a, a Napoleon pizza, whatever is Italian. This is what they offer. This is what they offer is downtown. You can spend this on in bullet points. Option two, you tell them, Italian, this they they make different sorts of um, pasta there. This is what they offer. They have a romantic ambience. This is what for this amount. It's just you you doing the research for them, and then now choose what they want. And you can as well. I've showed you how to put link. You can copy the website and put it there for them to check out whatever you said, and then get back to you and know which one to go ahead with. It's easy as that. Then the second research is a client wants to celebrate a birthday dinner at a high-end seafood restaurant. They have specific requests. They told you the dates. Because um, you can go to a restaurant's website and you book a date, maybe um, the birthday is on 15th August, you book a date. You book a date for the um, birthday time because you're not doing the birthday alone. You're not there with just your cake and they will not be there with just the cake and candle. They need people. So there's a reason why they are booking ahead. And then they're going to, they have um, six people attending the birthday party. So what you're going to do is to book with the restaurants. You can phone them. It's easier to phone them. That the, um, most of these restaurants, they have customer care. They'll be quick to answer. Then they will tell you the date. They will tell you the table number. That's if your client, if you've done the research of which of them have space, which of them have the space for for six or seven people, um, the guest is six, then the person seven will make them number seven, the seventh person. So you're going to book, call them on phone. They will tell you, then you tell your client. If they say, go ahead, you go ahead. Then special request, a table with a view and a birthday cake. So that means the restaurant will be providing, um, providing your clients with a birthday cake. So is that easy then the certain research that you have to do proper research if you have um research that you have to go in depth in order to do the proper research you maybe they say history of something the pros the cons life has made it easy ai has made it easy so do not be do not be um do not be don't have limitations to use ai AI can make things that you can do for maybe four hours. You can do it in 30 minutes, you're done. Or just how many? Oh, so can you all hear me? Amanda says she can't hear me. Yes, can, I can hear you. Yes, yeah, I can, I can hear, hear you. you. Okay, maybe it's her web, her, her network. So AI has made it easy. The um, common AI we know is chat GPT. Put that thing bam put the prompt there in chat gpt and it will bring out things now you now have to put some source to it you take keywords from from the prompt and you search maybe history of the restaurant then you start and um you start writing those things in your own ways fixing it the way you want then remember how do you send this thing to your to your clients. It's not as if they cannot use chat GPT. It's not as if they cannot read. They want it simplified. They want it summarized. So you write it in a way that it will not bore them, that they will get that information they need 
quickly. That is research as a virtual assistant. You see now it's very easy. It's something you can do. But if it's not explained in details like this, it looks like they are doing magic. When you say people on LinkedIn, and moreover, if you're not on LinkedIn at this um, in this uh, moment, if you're not on LinkedIn, you're missing out on your career path. You, I don't know how to <laughs> how to put it. I think you you the skills has not fallen from your eyes. You should be on LinkedIn because. I think when you're on LinkedIn and you see what others are doing, you want to be better. You want to check out a lot of tools. You want to ask questions. You, the connection is there. You have um, a, commun a, commun a, a community where you can, you, you can do better for yourself. And also, the more you speak about yourself there, there are um, business people there, there are recruiters there, you have more chances to be recruited. So. If you have a um, a LinkedIn page or profile you've not been using, you can go back to it and start and start saying things. Tell people you're a virtual assistant. Redo your headline. Make it attractive. Get pictures. Snap um, attractive pictures, not bust and bomb bomb. Just something that will show that you have your head together. Put on LinkedIn and keep on saying things. Whatever you learn new, you can post it on LinkedIn and all that. So that is that um, for now. And I will drop my LinkedIn profile on the WhatsApp, uh, on our WhatsApp group. We can follow each other to grow and connect with each other. So our journey begins. Um, guys, for... The next slide. So now, from so far so good, we have learned email management. At least from this free class, you you will check yourself and say, what have I learned? What have I what have I dedicated my time to my time and data to to learn? You've learned what it means to to manage your email or inbox. So when they say email management, you know it's not you're not doing something magical. It's just for you to create filters, labels, um, archive, delete. Um, these filters is like creating a rule. You don't sometimes you don't need just like Bianca showed. You don't need it in your inbox. Once it has that thing, go to this folder. So you don't need it. Then. Um, vacation responder when you see all these things you know it's not magic certain meals that when i didn't know all these things i'll be like how how is it possible for these people to do this but one thing about life is when you see something that somebody has done you try we have a lot of tools now that you can ask how did this person do this thing and they'll just explain you see that it's not um out of the moon it's something you can even do then you now understand what email management is you know how to schedule using word body if people are in different time zone you can fix a time that can that can suit them just send them email check out when what time is available for them what time is suitable for them for the meeting tell them the availability of your client because your client hired you because they don't have time for that to and fro to and fro email so you know when you're done when you're done um do i'm um, sending the email you get the feedback to them tell them this is the time um and i fix the link for the meeting that's why you're being paid then you understand um a client how to plan a client's travel from um, New York to London, from London to Tokyo, you just use that your world time body. Check the time. When will this person land in London? In London, what time will it be when my client is landing? How many hours flights? How many hours whatever? You just do the maths. Take it as if it's yourself. You can try um, to know if you can book something for yourself. You know you're not travel. You're not traveling to anywhere like me. I can decide to book a flight to Australia. So far, I did not pay. In all these things, you're trying out your hands to know what to do. If I'm called upon to do this thing, can I do it? Then how to do a quick research. 
chat gpt is there cloud ai is there a lot of ai that are there you can just put your prompts it depends on the prompt you're using put the prompt and it will give you the results then you go to google and you start searching and start um and start changing these things to suit whatever you want to send to your clients and remember to always send your email in a way that it will not be boring you're not giving your clients a book to read or a bible to read or a dictionary you're giving them pros and cons bullet points so it to be made easy for them that's why you were employed so that is um, in simple terms what it is to be a virtual assistant then um in the paid class, we'll be looking at different tools. So that is the difference. The difference between the paid class and this one is that we just did the basics. At least this one will help you understand um, what, what this class is all about. Then in the paid class, we'll look at how we can use different tools, even how to automate um, how to automate a lot of our processes. Then um, how storage we'll look at onedrive google drive we'll look at um we'll look at buffer we'll look at dropbox we'll look at tondoist so we are look, going to look at all these tools so that when you you know when you enter linkedin a lot of people will be saying big big words you know what they are saying you will not be like here it's not for me so that if they are saying you understand what they mean you can also draft your own post because you are knowledgeable on all these tools so that is that for tonight. I hope um, we were able to learn something.